This is episode number 28 with Nadine Artemis. Welcome to the Melissa Ambrosini Show. I'm your host, Melissa, best-selling author of Mastering Your Mean Girl, and I'm here to remind you that love is sexy, healthy is liberating, and wealthy isn't a dirty word. Each week, I'll be getting up close and personal with thought leaders from around the globe to uncover the habits, mindsets, tools, and rituals that they have used to become world so that you can create epic change in your own life and become the best version of yourself possible. Are you ready, beautiful? Nadine is the creator of Living Libations, an exquisite line of serums, elixirs, and oils for those seeking the purest of the pure botanical health and beauty products on the planet. She is the author of Holistic Dental Care, The Complete Guide to Healthy Teeth and Gums, and the upcoming book, Renegade Beauty. Described by Alanis Morissette as a true sense visionary, Nadine has formulated a stunning collection of rare and special botanical compounds. Her healing creations, along with her concept of Renegade Beauty, encourages effortlessness and inspires people to rethink conventional notions of beauty and wellness. In today's episode, we chat about how Nadine created her company, Living Libations, and how she got to where she is today, what a still room is, the secrets of radiant and glowing skin, the power of engaging with the elements, what toxic products are actually doing to us, why and how our bacteria is our beautician, why you need to understand and look after your mouth's microbiome, how to restore and rejuvenate your mouth's microbiome, why you need to think about your mouth as an ecological garden, what causes receding gums, I found this very, very interesting, the baking soda and apple cider vinegar trick to regenerate and rejuvenate your gums, the eight steps to self-dentistry, the power of healthy sun exposure and why we need it, plus so much more. You guys are going to love this episode. And for everything that we mention in today's episode, you can check out in the show notes. And that is at melissaambrosini.com forward slash 28. And without further ado, let's dive into this epic conversation with the one and only Nadine Artemis. Welcome, Nadine. It is so great to have you. Before we dive in today's juicy conversation, can you tell us what you had for breakfast this morning? Ah, that was so long ago. It's, a, <laughs> it's 11 o'clock at night here. But what did I have? Well, always have a glass of spring water. And then um, the whole family likes to just have breakfast in bed and watch the sunrise. So um, my husband actually prepares chocolate wrapped up in, uh, we make these things called chia crepes. So we, usually it's with blueberries. So we combine um, chias and, blue, and blueberries and tocotrinols and then make like, put those in the dehydrator and then wrap the chocolate in that. So we have that set up the night before. And so mornings are very relaxing and lovely. And then my son gets like eggs and stuff, you know, about half an hour later, but Ron and I just cruise on that and then maybe work our way to a smoothie. That sounds delicious. Chocolate crepes? Yes, please. Sign me up. I'm coming over for breakfast. <laughs> so tell us about how you got to where you are today, doing what you do, creating living libations. How did this all happen? Well, I really can um, see a trace it back to, you know, being a kid, being a child, and, and really listening to those early whisperings of, uh, and really following it's like I tell my son, you've got to be the detective of your own life. And you really want to tune in and direct yourself to where your interests, where your curiosity and where your desires are. And I love nature like most kids. You know, we had a cottage, lake, forest. So I was always playing there. Um, and then, you know, as I was a teenager going through school, 
I was completely fascinated with makeup and perfumes. Like I had over a hundred bottles of like the tiny little perfume bottles and my mom gave me stuff and my older sister gave me stuff. So I was always mixing that and playing with that, all those things. Um, didn't really understand that, you know, anything about synthetics back then. This is in the eighties. And, um, then in grade nine, I was doing a science fair project. Uh, so I was looking for inspiration at the library and I found a book on how to make cosmetics. I was thrilled about this. What really inspired me was the chapter on perfumes because it talked about the history of perfumes in ancient Egypt. And then I was realizing how like perfumes were made, which, you know, I didn't really have that story when I was just working with the, or blending these commercial perfumes. And the book had suggested that the materials you could find in, pro in a health food store and they were called essential oils. So that was the first time I'd heard about essential oils and my mom took me to the big city of Toronto and we found a health food store and that was when I first smelled like pure um, bottles of neroli and ylang, sandalwood, and I was completely captivated. So for my science fair project, I recreated Nina Ricci's L'Air de Temps perfume, and that was a lot of fun for me. I was also thrilled about connecting perfume to ancient Egypt, as my great-grandfather had been uh, president of the London Egyptology Society. He went on archaeological digs with Howard Carter as the illustrator. So I had lovely paintings of his in our home um, that I grew up with, with, of the Temple of Luxor and um, pictures of Isis that he had painted, that kind of stuff. So I was just thrilled with that whole ancient Egyptian aspect. And then, you know, I was still in normal cosmetic and body care world. Uh, I thought, you know, the body shop was exciting because um, I thought it was natural at that time. But then I, when I was 18, I'm in university. Uh, I've got a health food store down the street. I'm there like every day exploring the books, the foods, I'm really understanding the whole thing about processed foods and the supermarket and how everything at the supermarket is like, you know, manufactured and really understanding ingredients. Like I had a whole book on like understanding supermarket ingredients and this just naturally within a few weeks, I just understood how, you know, body care, typical body care was from that same realm. And that, you know, even my cucumber toner and pineapple face wash and all that stuff was just not real. I looked at those labels more carefully and I really understood the fallacy of it all. So I just started making my own food and my own skincare and um, making it for friends and family. And while I was in university studying, I was also studying my own studies of essential oils. I was look look. Getting, I got um, old books um, from relatives in Europe on 18th century cos cosmetic making, and they had everything like from recipes for you know um, all the toiletries and perfumes and powders and um, you know even dry shampoos. They weren't really called that back then, but it was just chock full. And I was really fascinated with the period of the 18th century because it it was before the advent of synthetics. And those European books were also really interested in, in bringing forward ancient recipes from Egypt and ancient Greece. So it was sort of that last century before everything, you know, got synthesized. And so that's really how I feel it was really came together. I was very, you know, people loved my preparations and I couldn't wait to get out of university because I had a whole concept planned for a store. And then when I was 22, I opened North America's first full concept aromatherapy store. And that was the beginning. <laughs> wow. Isn't it sad how it's kind of over the years become more chemical laden, all these products. But if you go back centuries, it was really quite simple and really pure and beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, just even studying how how ancient cultures would clean themselves and, you know, with oils. And then there's these, you know, the gua sha, which is like uh, this, that's what they called it in um, Chinese culture, but it's like the wood or a crystal or a bone, um, sort of body spatulas, basically. 
And in ancient um, Greece, yeah. they called it strigals, and they would anoint the body fully with oil, and then they would take these sort of bone or wood spatulas and just ru- like rub that against the oiled skin, and then remove it before you would go into the baths, and then you'd go into the baths and then massage yourself, you know, and then get a massage afterwards. Or Cleopatra had a still room, and so did Napoleon's uh, wife, Marie Antoinette. They had a still room. They didn't just have a bathroom. They had a still room. So that's like, I mean, I'm not sure where in the house it would be. I'm imagining it was by the bathroom because they would bathe and have their toiletries. What's a still room? The still room would be where f- fresh floral waters were distilled for your daily use. <laughs> so they were truly making fresh cosmetics. And in ancient Egypt, in the temples were um, chamber rooms where the priests um, of that time were also the medicine people. And they would make, you know, making... Um, consecrations and oils and unguents were a part of their holy training. Wow. So with all of your experience and knowledge over the years, what do you believe are the secrets to radiant, glowing, beautiful skin? Because ultimately, that's what every woman wants, is that beautiful, glowing, flawless skin. What are your top secrets? Well, yeah, you know, I like that you're asking about the skin in particular and glowing skin, because I do feel like that's one thing that we can, you know, allow ourselves to shine with. Cause you know, you may not like the color of your eyes or something, but you, you know, you're kind of stuck with that color, but our skin can evolve and change in, in really good ways. So I feel like the real secret to all of that is engaging with the elements And that's something I like to think of as cosmoetics, because really we are, you know, we are made of the same things that, you know, make stardust. And we, there's microbes that land on the planet from meteorites and we are made up of microbes. So one thing that we, you know, there's been such a focus in this last century and in our Western cultures that the the focus is on the external you know, it's all about the veneer. And when we really tune into our innate intelligence and the innate intelligence of our bodies and the innate intelligence of whatever's making the sunrise and the stars come out at night, that's what we want to tune into. And it's the elements that will revive our self care and revive our individual beauty. And that's about the sun and water and air and the earth, and all the beautiful gifts that the earth provides in the form of thousands of beautiful botanicals. So wait, you're saying that the best way to get glowing skin is to not go out there and buy 100,000 different products and spend $100,000, but it's to engage with the elements. Yes. Yeah, that simple. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) It's that simple. And it's so much cheaper. (laughs) <laughs> totally. So much cheaper. And, you know, we're at a, we're at a great time on the planet in the sense that, um, cause obviously there's a balance to the elements and there has been, you know, and still to this day, there's peak, you know, obviously, uh, not all parts of the world are, are, um, you know, able to n- have shelter from the elements at all times. But for a lot of the population of the planet, we can engage with the elements in such a luxurious way because we have running water we have shelters. So, you know, we're not out in the blistering sun all day. So we can use the sun in, you know, with, um, we can enjoy it on our skin for, you know, good amounts of time every day, but it doesn't have to be all day. Fresh water, air, you know, we can also bathe with all of the elements. There's forest bathing, there's air bathing, uh, there's water, bathing in water, which we all know and love, and sun bathing, and just lying on the earth. All of these things will really um, you know, bring out our innate beauty. So for people who want to start engaging more with the elements, we do just what you said. So, you know, bathing in the water and bathing in the sunlight, what are some other things that we can do? Yeah. Well, and then really understanding botanicals. I mean, you don't have to understand it, understand it, but you 
just really want to stop applying synthetics to the body. I mean, it truly is that simple. And no pore in your body, no cell is parched for petroleum. What is these petroleum and all of these toxic chemicals, what are they actually doing to us? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So I, I feel like at least your listeners or this day and age, we have all, you know, we all understand that there are chemicals in our skincare. You know, there's lead in our lipstick and there's parabens in things and there's aluminum in our deodorant. So I think we all understood the toxicity of modern toiletries and the effect it's having on our skins, on our skin, in our cells and on our hor- hormone system, our endocrine system. But what I think is really quite revolutionary is the research about the microbiome. Because now that we're really understanding about the the microbiome, which is the general word for the billions and billions of bacteria that live in our bodies, live in our guts, live on our skin and in our mouths. Those are sort of three general areas where the microbiome is quite flourishing or hopefully flourishing. And so what we really now know too is that the microbiome is really a great communication system in our body. It's really allowing a lot of stuff to happen. Um, if the microbiome, you know, it, it really allows us to live. And so with understanding the microbiome, we now have a new level of understanding the danger to our, to our dermis, to our skin, that this sort of daily application of, of chemical creams and lotions is really doing to this forest of flora that lives and supports our skin. And um, it's really when we, we think of there's a, there's a balance of bacteria, like there's literally, you know, bacteria crawling on our skin. <laughs> it's totally microscopic and it needs to be there. And we want to think of it like the soil of our skin. And so the, chemi- the penetration of chemicals that we commonly use in our modern skincare really creates a vicious cycle of dermal dysbiosis and premature aging that's difficult to escape because, you know, if you've got acne and then you're applying that topical like benzoyl peroxide and all the other ingredients that come with it and the drying alcohols, that's going to disturb the microbiome it's going to maybe mutate or eradicate some species that should be on your face. And it's going to also disrupt their food supply, which kind of, you know, can be icky to think about. But, you know, there's billions on our, on our skin and they need to be there. So then we've disrupted the whole food supply. So then that disturbs our lipid layer and the, the top layer of our skin, the stratum corneum. So, um, it's really important to allow that to flourish because when we let that flourish, it's really like, it's like the bacteria is our beautician. And if we just outsource our beauty routine to bacteria, then we can let the microbes micromanage our skincare. And, um, you know, the microbes have beauty stimulating secretions that can clean our pores and keep skin supple. And so it's like relearning Um, and sort of unprogramming ourselves and knowing that we need to befriend the bacteria on our skin because that's what's ultimately going to unplug the pores. It's not about, you know, scrubbing harder with plastic exfoliating beads um, as blackheads really begin from like things like a congested colon. Rosacea is linked to leaky guts. It's related to, to gut dysbiosis and acne arises from oxidization. And so when we have a healthy microbiome, that's just like, you know, a best friend forever. And it really is like, you know, the ultimate beauty cream. Mm, I love that your bacteria is your beautician. That is brilliant. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. So let's talk about, you mentioned before, the microbiome in the mouth. I personally have receding gums and... I even went and got a gum graft. This was quite a few years ago, about maybe five years ago, because I was seeing a dentist at the time and he told me that's what I needed. Um, This was before I was seeing a holistic dentist. And I was getting receding gums. I went and got a gum graft. Little did I know that 
I think 90% of gum grafts don't work and it didn't work and my gums are exactly where they were before and if not they've kind of got a little bit worse. So I am personally fascinated in understanding the microbiome of your mouth. And I love that you say your teeth and gums can be rejuvenated and restored, which is awesome for me. So what does receding gums mean? And how can we restore, rejuvenate and fix anything that's going on in our mouth? Yeah, obviously a great question. And um, I really feel like our mouths are also sort of these metaphors for like what's going on in the planet. You know, we've got mercury in our mouths and in our seas. We've got uh, erosion of topsoil. We've got erosion of the microbes in our mouths. So it's, it's the same thing. Like the really cool thing is like once we know that we have a microbiome and that we want to allow it to flourish, um, you know, that's a great secret for being healthy. I don't even know if it's a secret, but it's like a great beauty tip, so to speak. Um, so the same way that we've been approaching um, dental care, this is some, some, very similar to how we've been approaching, you know, medicine and skincare it, and just life on the planet. There's the germ warfare, you know, where coming out of the, you know, kind of the forties and the fifties, where it's just like kill the germs, um, you know, get rid of the pests, pesticides it's like just about sort of carpet bombing the planet carpet bombing our mouths with you know things like uh really chemical laden mouthwashes toothpaste a lot of the dental procedures that we do also contribute to um mutating the microbes in our mouths as well so it's really the dental care like as in the dental procedures and our and our oral care products have been mutating the, ma- the mouse microbes on a, on a large scale. So that's the, the sort of triple threat to our mouths is the harmful procedures, the lack of understanding about um, knowing that, that we have this uh, a tooth nurturing dentinal fluid, which I like to refer to as an invisible toothbrush. So our teeth have a dentinal lymph system that brings nutrients from the roots of the teeth into the teeth and then out onto the surface of the enamel. So we've also been thinking a lot of our teeth as um, the danger is just things in the mouth and sitting on the teeth. But a lot of it, of course, comes from the inside because our teeth are connected to the body. And then the sort of uh, like periodontal scorched earth policy on bacteria, right? It's like just kill, (laughs) kill it with that like swishing with Listerine. So all of this sorts of sets up a perfect periodontal storm that fosters like this entropy and dental decay and is leaving, you know, and then all the solutions are sort of these band-aid solutions of gum grafts and bleaching and veneers and fillings. Because again, even a filling is not addressing the root cause of decay and how cavities are created. So we really need to sort of think of our mouths as this ecological garden and the microbes, the bacteria, the beneficial bacteria in our mouths, we want to keep there. We don't want to be killing it off with like triclosan in our toothpaste. So um, I have eight steps that um, is easily found on our website to just like that I've designed for, you know, anybody can do it anytime But it's also really great for people that sort of, I think of it as like pulling up their socks with their oral care. So, you know, before, if you haven't been to the dentist or a dentist in a while, you want to do the eight steps for about three months, and then you're going to have a way better uh, dental appointment. And then just, you know, receding gums can come from a number of things. Um, They can come from having braces when you were younger. It can come from mercury fillings. Yep, mercury fillings also cause recession. Yep, done that. Dental work can also throw off. I mean, even just the one cavity filling can really throw off our occipital ridge and cranial, you know, whole cranium and uh, the jaw. And that can then adjust how um, our jaw sits and that can create things tension in that whole area which can lead to grinding and clenching of the teeth tmj stuff so that gritting of the teeth at night causes the gums to recede as well also sodium lauryl sulfate which is like in every toothpaste 
um, including even ones at, the, at some more, you know, healthier quote unquote brands. So that's, that also causes gum recession. So, um, you want to rebalance the oral ecology. You can swish with probiotics because you want to build up your sort of, I like to call it a bacterial bank account. You want to change brushing techniques. Um, like if you're, you always want to go gum towards the tooth, whether that's the top or the bottom, right? So you're always, and you don't go back down on that stroke. It's always gum up, gum up, or on the top row, it's like gum down, gum down. Then there's some just neat tricks. Um, one periodontist, uh, Dr. Paul Keyes, he was, uh, you know, one of those uh, gum surgeons and he wanted to help people preventing, preventing to have to have gum grafts. So he, um, a really simple genius trick. He, so you, he does a thing with baking soda and apple cider vinegar. And what you do is uh, just brush your teeth, like do, do a normal round. And then do uh, another round where you're using baking soda, which you can just use baking soda to brush your teeth too. Like that's a, an amazing substance that is, uh, you know, you can totally just get rid of all commercial products right now and just stick to something like baking soda and you'll be far better off. It's alkalinizing. It's got a good scrubbing action. It's gentler. The scrub is gentler than most toothpaste. So anyway, you're coating the teeth with uh, baking soda, like kind of leaving it on, you know, just doing like a gentle coat. You're not really scrubbing the teeth at that point. And then you just take like a teaspoon of, or even, you know, just like a very shallow teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. And you just, it like, uh, there's that, it's like a grade eight science experiment. And you let all that foam in your mouth <laughs> and it really lifts off plaque and bacteria and in ways because you know even with really diligent brushing you can't get everywhere on every surface so it's great when you have like a whole mouth and kids love this too because it's just like a foaming fun <laughs> coming out of their mouth and of course apple cider vinegar is an acid but baking soda is so alkaline that the sum total is still alkaline once you've added that um, apple cider vinegar. The first time I did it, I was so amazed at how clean my teeth felt. It was also like a long, I was going to be like, it was a long travel day, which, you know, you're, once you're changing time zones and stuff, you're like so ready to brush your teeth. But I just remember like just having such clean teeth all day. So that's a really good one to help regenerate the gums. And then through what I like to refer to as botanical biotics, because like an antibiotic means like against life and a botanical and then biotic meaning life. So our botanical friends are really help, here to help us uh, revive much, you know, what we need for our skin and care of our bodies. So things like, um, you know, sea buckthorn and different essential oils that have been used for centuries are so great for our mouths. And they can help, you know, stimulate um, the gums by, uh, like I know people haven't, they've even found a transformation from, you know, gums, they can get, for some people, if they're not healthy, they can actually get a little bit pale. Um, so they help bring circulation back to the area, which helps the body bring uh, nutrients to the area to help heal them. So you just want to keep things alive in your mouth. And now what, what's, what's really neat about using centuries old ingredients like frankincense and neem and clove and cinnamon and rose and myrrh and cardamom, all of these botanicals that have been traditionally used for oral care in many different cultures, is now through the study of the microbiome and the search for something called a quorum, sensor, sense, a quorum sensing inhibitor which is like short Q QSI, scientists are looking for substances that are quorum sensing inhibitors because they now realize that, you know, we have a lot of issues with anti antibiotic resistance. And, you know, that is a very much known thing in, um, in scientific research. So essential oils, as it turns out, are amazing quorum sensing, sensing inhibitors. So, why we want QSIs is because um, in our mouths is like all these bacteria and, and, and hundreds of species and then billions of bacteria live in our mouths. And um, 
you know, they're generally doing the job of keeping things happy. But now through, uh, through the study of the microbiome, what we're seeing is because of the way the chemicals that we're using in our mouths and eating GMOs and all that stuff is that we're literally losing bacterial species. So when a cat, so the, the uh, bacteria that causes cavities, uh, strep, uh, strep, uh, strep bacteria, it's, it's always in a mouth, like even in a really healthy mouth, but it's like the beneficial bacteria keep that in check. And so now what science is understanding is that because we're missing species, um, the, the, it's like the, the beneficial bacteria and the, phyto, the pathogenic bacteria, if they're missing species, then things get out of control. And so strep, just like H. pylori bacteria in the gut, which is seen to be a bad thing, it's actually probably was okay a few decades or centuries ago because it had the other, it had bacteria that also kept it in check. And so um, now pathogens are able to thrive more because we've lost species, we've mutated species with things like antibiotics. And so when the pathogens, they're normally like free floating around the body like plankton in the ocean. But when your defenses are down, they start to gain traction and communicate through quorum sensing. It's how they communicate and how they regulate their gene expression. So, and then that's how biofilms fill, um, form. And then antibiotics can't even pe to penetrate those biofilms. Um, but now they're understanding that the essential oils can penetrate those biofilms. Um, you know, it's different degrees, and like it showed that uh, clove has a is it an effective quorum sensor, like 74%, that kind of thing. But the genius of the essential oils is that they can eradicate the pathogens but still work with the friendly bacteria. So they're really like this perfect um, medicine to really help us heal things because they clean up what we don't want, they work with the good bacteria, and they also really help to re rejuvenate our skin elasticity our tissue um, there's many qualities in essential oils that help to inhibit you know even the enzymes that break down collagen and elastin um, they help to bring circulation to the area they they are voluntary which means they help to speed up healing so they're they're anti-inflammatory they're antiviral antibacterial so, uh, so it's like it's just really great and that's the palette that i've been working with since i was a teenager and i just feel like you know there's so they're so elegant. They're so full of mystery. They're amazing medicine, and they just keep keep shining and keep divulging new secrets about themselves. That that after all these years, it's just still so fascinating. Can you tell us about the eight step self dentistry protocol you were talking about before? Can you run us through the eight steps, or is it too much? I think I could do a quick one. I also just, I don't have it in front of me, so I hope I remember them all. <laughs> we'll link to it in the show notes as well. We'll link to your book, absolutely. Awesome. Um, so the first step, I just suggest that you make a mason jar of like salt water or baking soda, or you can combine them. So you just take like 16 ounces of water and like half a tablespoon of salt or baking soda, and you just have a shot glass in the bathroom. And then, so that's the first step. You're just going to have a swish of that and you can swish it all over your mouth. That just like clears the palate and it also helps with it just creates a sea of alkalinity. And that's really good too for kids because again, they're going to be really, I don't know. I don't think diligent brushing really happens to like te you're a teenager and you know, you've got all that coordination down and really getting it. So that's very helpful for kids. And then the next step is scraping the tongue which it's easy to find a tongue scraper or you can use your spoon. Um, a lot of bacteria live on the tongue, especially in the back of the tongue. And then the next step is um, using a manual toothbrush. And I recommend you, there's an ionic toothbrush. And so that uh, works with your saliva to create negative ions, which are a good thing. And that in and of itself removes plaque 40% more than a regular toothbrush. But to this, you could add 
a touch of baking soda, or um, you could dip your toothbrush in like a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution. And to that, um, I do make dental serums with that are very concentrated essential oil blends for the mouth. So you would just put one drop of that on, or you can, you know, use one drop of peppermint diluted with a little bit of coconut oil. So that you're going to just, that's the, when you're thinking, this stage with the manual toothbrush is all about the gums. So you're really like brushing the gums at this phase. Of course, it's going to, you know, hit the teeth, but you're really just lightly, um, so you're going up almost into your cheek if it's the top to get that top of the gum and then you're going down and then gum and then down. And, um, that's really good. It's kind of like, um, you know, how we dry brush our bodies or our, our skin and it's kind of like brushing the gums in that way to like stimulate it, get those essential oils, um, stimulating the gums and bringing the lymphatics to that area. And, um, then the next step is this is like brushing the teeth part. And for this, I recommend an electric toothbrush. Um, and it could be, I like the tiny round headed ones because it goes into areas that a normal toothbrush doesn't, but you know, a sonic toothbrush or something like that. And then this phase, you would um, you just use baking soda or a toothpaste that's really, truly good. And, um, or, and you can also use a drop of a serum again. And this time you're really focusing on the teeth and not really the gums. And that's where you're polishing them and you're getting all that plaque off and you're really focusing on, on, um, on the teeth in that phase. Then the next phase is like uh, checking, you know, you sh it's good to just run your tongue over your teeth and see if you've missed any areas. I always find there's like on my right side, on my top teeth, for some reason, there's like one tooth. It just never, I always have to really make an effort to go over this one tooth because it seems to always get messed. Um, so, you know, just know your mouth that way. Know, like, you know, use your tongue. Feel like after you really think you've brushed your teeth, like feel it, have you, and what, where are your areas that you're missing? Then the next phase is really like caring for the gums. So for this, um, again, you're just going to use one drop of that serum. I also make an ozonated gum gel, which is made with ozonated oil and the essential oils. And um, so that phase, you would just really be taking a drop or like, yeah, drop or a little smidge of the gel and rubbing that over the gums. And um, if your gums need extra care, that is the next step is extra care. So, there, you know, there's those gum massaging tools. They're really just like a rubber tipped tool and um you would just you go through all the gums like you just follow the gum line on the uh, front side of the mouth and then in the inside of the mouth and for that you're going to be um you're going to see there's a lot more plaque in the gum line and when there's plaque in the gum line i mean that slowly but surely erodes the gum i like people to think of um the gums like turtlenecks for the teeth and so you want a nice turtleneck on there you don't want to get to a situation where you've got a cowl neck going on or a v-neck <laughs> and so that's where you've got to really glide along those gums remove that extra plaque and then if your gums really need even more help um, we also have this blunt tipped syringe so it's just like a, a syringe but it's like got a it's not a sharp it's the it's hooked, like it's pointed, uh, bent, it's bent, and then it's dull, so it's not, you know, you can't inject your skin with it, and you put serums or 3% hydrogen peroxide or salt water or baking soda water, and this is like, it's kind of like a Vitapik, but it's really micro in a way, and you can really control where it's going. Like a Vitapik's good, but it's, it's a little more general, and then you can, you can, put it between the teeth to flush things out or uh, what what's great for gums is it's the sulca right that's the area that's um that area where there's the union of the gums and teeth is essential to really care for that area because yeah the danger of having your gums receding is that then you've got tooth that is exposed that doesn't have enamel so 
then it's easier to get cavities along the gum line, that kind of thing. Uh, so you can flush out the gums with this little tool, and that really helps to rejuvenate the gums as well. And I just remembered, before you're doing your extra care for your gums, you want to floss. <laughs> i got to forget flossing. So again, to up your flossing game, you take one of those serums, or you take like a drop of organic peppermint or tea tree, you run it along the floss, and then you floss. Um, and... I recommend that people floss twice and uh, especially in the beginning and especially if when you floss your gums are bleeding. Many clients find that when they have used a dental serum along the floss and if they used to bleed when they would floss that that for many people turns around in 24 hours. For some people if their health is in a different situation it could take a week but the th it works so fast and the gums really they're a fast healing tissue if given the right environment and the right uh, things to support it. What do you think of water picks? I do think they're good. I just, I just like the syringe more because you don't have to plug it in. Uh, you can, it's so easy to carry around and it really gets to that micro level and that interdental level. But the, the water picks are good and also but up it you know upgrade your water pick game by again using salt water baking soda water three percent hydrogen peroxide and adding a dental serum to that as well mm, oh so many great tips honestly i am going to totally rock my dental regime from now on because if i'm honest i'm a little bit lazy <laughs> i i am and you've just inspired me to really put a little bit of a firecracker up my butt and and really sort this out because you know my husband's been saying it to me he's like you're gonna be 80 and have no teeth if you don't start looking after your gums and he's always trying to get me to do things and I'm just a bit lazy when it comes to that so it's boring yeah I know I know but I'm gonna I'm gonna read your book and I'm gonna do your eight steps and I'll report back to awesome. you once I've done it for three months good, good. <laughs> that is awesome those tips are great thank you so much for sharing them I wanted to touch on something you mentioned before about the elements and you mentioned sun and you mentioned healthy sun exposure. I want to know what your definition of healthy sun exposure is and why it's so important. Yeah, it's one of my favorite subjects because um, also there's a lot to, you know, to undo in a way. Um, and sometimes I don't even know where to start because it's such a huge subject. But definitely, you know, I mean, the sun graces all things on our planet. We would not be alive right now if there was no sun. All things, really. We need the sun. And um, so, you know, and, and there's been a lot of literal lobbying us into a loss of sunlight. Like, it's literally, there's been a campaign. And... Um, we really need it because we need the vitamin D. And I, what I think is missing, or when we just think, oh my God, sun and sunscreen and hats and all that. And it, definitely there's times to wear hats and all that. But we've just totally missed out on the connection that our skin is designed to be exposed to the sun's rays. We have thousands of vitamin D receptors all over our body and including places where the sun can't even actually, you know, shine. And when our, when the sun reaches our skin and doesn't it just feel so good? It really does. Mm. It literally recharges my batteries. You know, it recharges my mitochondria. Yes. I, all of my friends call me a lizard <laughs> because I just like, I get in the sun and I just like, oh, I love it so much. And we do, we so, we so need it. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot of understanding about vitamin D now, you know, and like there's over 2000 studies that show how vitamin D is essential to, um, preventing cancer. And uh, for example, uh, it's been shown that if, if our vitamin D levels are optimal, then we have a 50% less 
uh, chance of, of developing breast cancer, for example. That's just one study. Um, so then we think, okay, great, well, we can take vitamin D supplements and then we'll be fine. But the vitamin D that skin and sun make is completely different than the fat-soluble vitamin that, that we can buy. And that is, 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 I'm glad it exists and I certainly take it all winter long. Because I also still feel like, I feel like I'm still catching up from probably decades of, of vitamin D deficiency because, uh, because we all are, we all have vitamin D deficiency. Well, not all, you know, but it's estimated 75% of the world population is vitamin D deficient. Um, so happy that vitamin D supplements exist, but we really need to get that sun skin contact because that's really helps to purify our blood and, um, and it just, so many things are responsible for that. I always feel like, you know, I'm always like so into the, into the microbiome and gut health. So I always feel like, you know, everything, everything really revolves around like more pro probiotic health than that. And I was just thinking about, I was going to give a, a talk on sun a few years ago and I was just thinking about that. I just wanted to say like, you know, take a lot of probiotics, drink chlorophyll and sit in the sun. So then I was like, well, what is it about that? Uh, the sun and the immune system and I, it was so neat because I found this study that really helped me understand the role of vitamin D receptors in a whole new way so if our vitamin D receptors are not filled are not brimming with vitamin D then these things called bacterial lingens which are very, very sticky bacteria they come in and it's basically like robbers just switching off the alarm and then just easily being able to like you know, rob the house or like shut down your immune system. It's just like sort of this flick of a switch thing. They can just come in and invade. And now we're understanding that that's like how Epstein-Barr virus or tuberculosis and these diseases were able to flourish. And so we really need that as part of our innate immune system. Vitamin D from the sun also helps to lubricate us and lubricate our skin from within um, it's actually not a vitamin, vitamin D, it's a precursor hormone. So it's very much lubricating to our body. And when our sun, when our skin feels the sun, our pores actually dilate to receive those rays to fill up our vitamin D receptors. And then, you know, so much of the things we fear, like age spots and hyperpigmentation, those are actually the root cause is not the sun. It's things like the polyunsaturated fatty acid oils that like the mazola, the canolas, the corn, the soy, these rancid oils that we, you know, eat in our standard North American diets. And so what we're forgetting in all of this, again, it's our relationship to creation. It's our relation to the sun what are we offering that relationship? You know, if I think of it sort of like offering us on this altar, it's like, are we, you know, drinking Coke for hydration and eating, you know, just white food without any pigments in them? So all of these things affect how we're going to do in the sun. And it was really neat at the turn of the century because you had the uh, Nobel Prize awarded for sun therapy and then there was Dr. Auguste Rollier who opened up these clinics in Switzerland where he was healing hundreds of people from tuberculosis, rickets, vitamin D deficiency, which is what causes rickets. Um, so really the sun was this great healer, as you know it can be, until about the 1930s. And then, I, and then once we get into the 40s and 50s and more chemicals are into our lives, then the sun just becomes our mortal enemy. Um, and what the issue is with sunscreens is besides the chemicals that are in it and things like oxybenzene that is not a carcinogen until it's exposed to sunlight, but which is the main active ingredient in many sunscreens. Um, so there's the chemical issue of sunscreens, but the main issue is that our DNA can, it's not good to burn your skin repeatedly, but our DNA and our skin can actually deal with a burn much better. It can, it can work, it, you know, it just works to release that heat and it transforms it. But when the, it just not used to, 
being in the sun, well, like six hours in the sun with sunscreen, it doesn't quite, the DNA doesn't quite know what to do with that. And the other issue is that sunscreen separates UVA and UVB rays. So all we're getting with sunscreen is UVA. And that is when UVA is separated from UVB, that's when the sun uh, becomes more like I, toxic's not really the right word, but that's when it becomes detrimental to our skin. So we need the UVA and the UVB together. And it's UVB that creates vitamin D. So also like a window separates that if you, you know, window, if you're sitting in front of a window with direct sunlight for hours a day for weeks on end, all you're getting is UVA. And then, and that could cause like, uh, you know, the issues with your skin eventually over time. So we need, we need, and also even, we don't even know to this day, like all of the rays, we haven't named all the light spectrum that comes from a sun ray. So there's still a lot to learn, but the science on the UVA and the UVB is very clear. So we don't want to be using classic sunscreens. You want to start slowly, start in the spring. In the clinics in Switzerland with Dr. Auguste Rollier, he would just start, you know, with the with the feet five minutes a day for a few days, move up to the, you know, below the knee, include the legs, and it was just slowly working the body in to be exposed to sunlight. And we want to build up that melanin base, and you want to carry, you want to build it up as much as you can if you're, especially if you've got a winter in your climate. And we're kind of like solar batteries, and that will help charge us through those winter months. Mm. I love that it's about starting really small and really slow, five minutes just with your feet, and then you add your up to your knees. It's, it's not about going and laying in the sun for five hours. This is not what we're saying, but it's just that little tiny bit of exposure to recharge the mitochondria, your batteries, and top up your your stores. Yeah, I love this. And for me, it feels so, feels so good. I don't know. I just feel like a different person when I've had that exposure. So what is one thing that you're working on or would like to improve within yourself at the moment? Now, this could be health related or it could be completely not health related, but I'm curious to know what's one thing you're working on within yourself. I feel like, you know, it's a pr been a process of a few years, but really, I mean, I generally, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm a type A personality at all, but I feel like it's so easy to wake up and exist through sort of a adrenal driven energy, which act, which eventually, you know, kind of burns you out. Yeah. So it's really about like moving from a place of allowing rather than this sort of a, adrenaline charge. Mm, I love that. That's something I'm personally working on myself at the moment. So there's like this common theme between so many people, my friends, my my tribe. There's this common theme at the moment about softening and moving toward what charms you most as opposed to ticking off your to-do list in an adrenaline doing state. So that's very interesting. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. So let's pretend now you have a magic wand and you could put one book in the school curriculum of every single high school around the world. Now, besides your book, is there, Let's. that's a given, that's already in the curriculum. So what is one book that you would wish to be in every single high school around the world? Well, the first thing that came to my mind um, is a book from Krishnamurti. She do J-I-D-U, Krishnamurti, because I think there's a couple of them. Um, and uh, The Revolution is Within but it really could be any of his books. <laughs> He's such a, he was such a great thinker. He was one of the first, besides like, you know, besides like Rumi poems and stuff, he was the first author that I read 
and that's like not, I didn't discover them until my twenties that I was just like a hundred percent of what is being said is real. Cause you know, most books, it's like an edit. You're like, Oh yeah. Like 90% of that uh, I'll take. But he was just so real to the feel. And he really goes into like the nature of thought, which I was always fascinated with is like thinking how we're thinking, why we're thinking. And he was the first to really speak to thought for me. Mm, I can't wait to read that one. Thank you. That's, yeah, sounds amazing. So I am fascinated with people's morning routines and how they prime themselves for the day. So do you have a morning routine or some non-negotiables? And if so, what are they? Yeah, I really like, again, even our family time, like we, I really like gentle starts to the morning, um, which is one reason why we even homeschool our, our child. <laughs> I was like so not into um, waking up and driving children to school, um, which I say that kind of cavalierly, but we actually have set up a whole forest school and, you know, he walks through the forest to go to class and it's really great. Oh my gosh. Can I, can I be <laughs> homeschooled by you, please? Yeah, yeah come on over. <laughs> oh, wow. It, it was really that whole thing of like, I just really quite early on in my teens, way before I had a family, I just was like, like I, I think of things on a deep level. Like I think of solutions. I think, I, I think, I think on a, on a deeper level, like I'm like, okay, there's sort of band-aid solutions and what's underneath it all. So in my late teens, I was just like, it seems strange that we have families and then everybody leaves for the day <laughs> to go into their separate worlds and all these, you know, cars and all that, just that whole system. Um, so mornings are really gentle, you know, we're, we're engaging with the elements. It was also my dream to be able to see the sunrise and the sunset every day. Um, you know, that's what I was looking for in home. Those are, the, those are the things. Whereabouts do you live in the, so we live in Canada live? in Ontario, uh, which is above the, like New York state in, in the, you know what I mean? Trying to give people like geographical visuals and, um, we live in the forest, uh, in a whole, in an area that's kind of like called cottage country. So there's, it's a, you know, and there's like summer camps here for kids and, you know, there's thousands of lakes. And so we live, you know, on land with thousands and thousands of trees in our forest. And then we look out, um, we have this little lake. It's about 30 acres. It's spring fed about 65 feet deep it's really just so gorgeous and like I grew up you know summers at a cottage and swimming in freshwater lakes so it's just like so beautiful we have a dock and anyway the sun comes up you know right in front of our window and it's just stunning and quiet and peaceful and it's it's you know it's it's like nature just surrounds us and it's heaven and I'm I really feel like heaven on earth especially in the summer um, you know, the winters are beautiful, but I'm, I'm a sunshine person. <laughs> mm, me too. What do you do after that? Yeah. So my favorite day, let's pretend it's sunny. So, um, cause that's, uh, those are my favorite days. So, you know, then it'll be, um, you know, there's, then I'll do a quick email check-in and then I'll go and meditate. And hopefully if it's sunny, then I can do that outside and have sun meditation time. And then, uh, dip in the lake, a nice swim, and then back out to get more sun, and then just oiling up my body with beautiful oils, um, and then back into a workflow after that, and then hopefully, you know, I can go hiking later on in the day. But to me, I just have really gentle mornings. It's about breathing and meditating and engaging with the elements. And does your son get involved with that, or does he? How old is he? I'm just curious. He's nine. And does he, ha or does he have his own little routine or what happens? Yeah, no, so we, so we all have breakfast together and in bed because I just, it's so cozy and fun and I'm just so not into like rushing. Okay, everybody, you know, get dressed. And then, um, so we all have that together. And then Ron will, my our father and the husband, uh, he will, he uh, used to be a yoga teacher. So he's great at, um, you know, 
we all breathe together. So he'll take us through like a breathing meditation. So it's a little more active because it's hard for kids to just like, okay, meditate. Like they're like, well, what? Um, so we do all that. And then Leaf will get his next round of breakfast, um, which is like, you know, more protein and eggs and stuff. And he'll get dressed and, and then off he goes. But we do, we do do our breathing meditation together. And then we talk, you know, we just talk about things and dreams. And um, Ron will usually say, okay, let's do a round of appreciation and so we all just go on like mini rampages of appreciation. And I think it's just such a great way to start the day. Oh my gosh. Can I come and sleep over? Come on. Yeah, we got lots of beds. <laughs> Please. Oh my God. Crepes and chocolate in bed, forest, lake, trees. I, you know, you were describing my heaven on earth. Well, do you live in an area with nature? I do. I do. I live, I live in Bondi Beach in Australia. So I have the beach at my doorstep. That's got to be good. Yeah, it's heaven. It's heaven. But I do love forest and trees and – but I also love the ocean and, you know, I, I love yeah, – I have to get my fix of both. So they're both beautiful and um, I love – yeah, I love them. So thank you. I'll be over. For sure. Usually when we're traveling, I'll, that's when I'll be like, okay, we have to – we always have to go to the ocean. Like, so that I can get that part in. I have to, I love hearing the ocean. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We live right on the beach and we can hear the ocean every night. It's heaven. And Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Every day I walk on the sand barefoot. I swim. I do my aura cleanse in the ocean, nice. diving in and it's just heaven. It's, it's so, it's so beautiful. So I'm very grateful to, I'm like you, I, I couldn't live anywhere else. I have to live close to the water. Um, it just fills me up and recharges me and I have to live in a warm climate because, because I'm just a lizard. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that. That's really beautiful. I would love to hear now, what are three things you're most recently grateful for? I am super grateful that I got my manuscript finished like so thankful about that because it was you know it's like I so I have another book coming out called Renegade Beauty oh wow what 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 can you tell us a little bit about it yeah um so a lot you know definitely touching upon subjects that we have spoke about today there's a whole chapter on sun and skin and uh also yeah how to engage with the elements really it's just um you know a all the way from philosophical levels to very practical levels. Uh, yeah, so we go from, you know, the cosmos way out there to looking at history and philosophy of beauty. And then there's like even a whole section on renegade beauty solutions, which is like, I don't know what it'll be in the book, but on my computer, it was like 60 pages of going through things, you know, from acne to yoni care. Mm. So it's, and there's recipes in it and there's a chapter on breast health and yoni health and pregnancy and sunshine and skin and perfume and everything it's in there. And it, it was just, I didn't realize how great it would feel to get that all out of my brain. Mm, I can't wait to read it. And maybe we'll have to have you back on the show to talk about Yoni Health because that's something that's incredibly important and something that I'm really passionate about. So thank you. Let's get you back on to do that. And I can't wait to read your book. That's awesome. Thank you for writing it. So <laughs> I've got a couple of uh, last questions for you. Okay. In your opinion, what is one of the most important things that you can do for your health today? Like if there's one thing that people can implement into their life today that would make such a huge impact, what do you think it would be? I think sun. We really need it. I'm not joking. Healthy sun exposure. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's awesome. What is one of the most important things that we could do for wealth? And, you know, this is referring to what you do in the world, your passion, your purpose and finances, being wealthy in every area of your life. Really being thankful. So find, you know, find what you need, you know, find, you know, if you're, even if you're in a lineup at the post office or something really boring, 
Use that time and use your mental capacity to focus on what you're appreciating in that moment. Because when you're in that receptive stage, which when you're thankful, you just are, you're receptive, you're open to receive. And that's it. You're either receiving or you're not. So you're either receiving love, money, health, or you're not. You're either in the receptive mode or you're not. Mm. And what is one of the most important things that we could do for love? I think, I think part of it is being in that receptive, thankful men- mind space. Mm. And then also, you know, I'm, I think we, when we feel unconditional love, we all, I think, I hope we've all had moments of that. And so when you can, and I'm not saying this, everybody, you know, it's not going to be perfect, but when you can, as much as you're able to focus and um, not allow conditions in your life to waver you, like when you know that your life and your livelihood comes from the inside of who you are, and that you can't control the conditions. So when you're in unconditional, when you're in an incon- unconditional mind frame, then you know you are love. You're receiving love. You feel the love of the universe. You're tapped into that sort of stream of well-being, and feeling love really is receiving love. Mm, I agree. That's really beautiful. I can feel the love from you through through the interwebs. So it's really beautiful. I'm very grateful. And finally, I'd love to be of service to you. And I'd love to know what is one thing that I personally and the listeners can do to serve you today? I'm speechless. That's so sweet. Like, as I can feel this now, too, like I can feel our connection. And I think when people are listening in, just have some deep breaths and feel the love, feel love. Send that out into the universe. Mm. So beautiful. Well, thank you so much. I have, I have learned so much on today's episode. And I'm so grateful. I want to acknowledge you for your curiosity to dive deeper and your bravery and willingness to follow your heart and do what you love in the world and to be your authentic, unique self. I absolutely love the work that you're doing. And obviously this is our first conversation we've ever had. You know, we've spoken over email, but I can really feel your energy and how beautiful you are. And you make me want to get on a plane and come and have a sleepover with you and eat chocolate crepes with you right now. (laughs) Oh, that's fun. Well, I, I'm like, oh, we got to go visit you when we're, when we come to Australia, which I don't know when that is, but I'm going to come see your beach. Have you ever been? I have, you know, my very best friend, if you're out there, Kelly Rowe, hello, (laughs) Um, from, from grade seven, she came from Australia in grade seven and we were best, absolute best buddies until 18 because she moved back to Australia. So that was so, it was, and then uh, that winter, so six months later, after she went back, I went to visit her for a month. Oh, wow. And did you come to Sydney? Yeah, so we did Sydney, and some of it's kind of foggy now, but uh, Byron Bay and a little bit up the Gold Coast. And then we went somewhere on a river on a houseboat for a bit too. But it was just, I love it. I love it. Wow. Well, you guys are more than welcome to come and stay with me whenever you're here. But oh, Thank you. And I look forward to it. But thank you so much for the work that you are doing. I am very grateful that I got to share you and your message and your work with my tribe. And we will link to everything that we have mentioned today in the show notes. So thank you so much, beautiful human being. Thank you so much. So much food for thought there, isn't there? I'm very excited because I am going to be dialing up my dental care regime for the next three months and I'm going to see how I go. 
And I hope you can take at least one thing from today's episode and implement it into your life. Remember, it's the little things that you do each day that add up to big results or big consequences. So if you loved today's episode, please subscribe to my podcast and leave me a five-star review in iTunes because that means we can inspire even more people together and we can get on more epic humans, which I know you really, really want. And don't forget to tell me on Twitter who you would like me to interview and make sure you tag me at Mel underscore Ambrosini and the person you want me to interview using the hashtag the Melissa Ambrosini show. And for everything that we mentioned in today's podcast, you can check out in the show notes and that is at melissaambrosini.com forward slash 28. And you can also listen to all my other epic episodes there too. So thank you so much for being here, for wanting to be the best version of yourself and for showing up today for you to rock. Now, if there's someone in your life that you can think of that would really benefit from this episode, please share it with them right now. And until next time, don't forget that love is sexy, healthy is liberating and wealthy isn't a dirty word.